What's going on, y'all? Listen, let me tell y'all something. I'm recording this on my phone, okay? And y'all know usually I don't record the what it is on my phone, but the computer is acting the ass, all right? Um, I ain't even set up the other computer. I don't know what's going on with my um iMovie or whatever, the I'm photo of it. Oh, bitch, whatever. It was just bothering me, so I just said, fuck it. I was up here trying to do something good for y'all, you know what I'm saying? Because I haven't been on here for a while. You know, I was like, damn. I only been on here since Sunday. It's almost Wednesday. They went a whole week without a video, whatever, damn near a whole week. So let me get up here and do something. And I really wanted to get up here and talk about shit while I was fresh. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it was just giving me the flux. Don't ask me why I haven't set up the new computer. I've been had it for a while. I just, you know, girl, time just didn't just keep on escaping me but anyway let's just get up into this video i hope everybody had a good week first of all before <laughs> before we get into the topics let me tell y'all about my journey of edibles okay because <laughs> i know some of y'all was following me on you uh, uh twitter and saw it listen so i've had an edible before i'm not an edible kind of sore but i had an edible before and so it was at the formation tour or whatever. And it was just like a piece of one or whatever. And so I, I don't think I got the full effect of it or whatever. If I say whatever one more time, I'm going to slap myself. I don't think I got the full effect of it. I think it was the adrenaline from being there and all the circumstances that led up to me being there at that time. You know, it was just a lot. And I just, it didn't hit me. Okay. So, you know, I was talking about that. People be telling me how edibles be, and, you know, you be spaced out, you be this, you be that, you do, 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 do. So I'm like, you know, I want to do the adventure, okay? I want to do an adventure too. So let me go find somewhere so I can bang some edibles, whatever. And I just so happen to see somebody that I follow that is a trustworthy person, you know, who was promoting somebody on Instagram, and they had a code or whatever to get something percentage off or whatever, and I went on ahead and I said, I went out on a limb and let me go ahead and try this. So the process was cute. The process was cute. It didn't take long. You know, it took like a, I say probably like three days, okay, to get here. And as soon as I got that, baby, I've been mean, high since Monday. I'm just going to let y'all know. It popped up Monday. I went on ahead. I got me some lollipops, got me some brownies, got me some, um, you know, some popcorn. And that first time that I had it with the lollipop, that was the one that I tried first. Baby, when I tell you for some reason, I ended up in the bathroom. No lie, I ended up in the bathroom sitting on top of the toilet. I don't know why I was in the bathroom because I was not using it, but I was sitting on top of the toilet for a good 15 to 20 minutes spaced out. I didn't know what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Then when eventually I something told me to get up, finally, I came back up in my room. I roamed around the house for a minute. And then I came in the room and I just, my body was so fucking loose. Okay, I was feeling so good. I was just really relaxed and calm. You know, I got a little bit of anxiety. I said, oh, this is what it feels to be anxiety free all the time. I said, oh, count me in. Okay, let me tell you something. Whoever invented edibles, y'all did a good thing putting weed up in um candy and shit like that to make it so that our lungs can be protected a little bit. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you need to unwind and sometimes alcohol just don't do that shit, okay? You just really need to mellow the fuck out. And that's what that shit did for me. And that is my journey on there. Uh, I got some more stuff. It was 25 milligrams, okay? 25 milligrams up in that sucker. You know, that um lollipop. But, um... Yeah, I'm going to try the popcorn next. So, you know, I'm going to let y'all know what's going on. And then the brownie got 50 milligrams, okay? I know not to eat the whole thing. I know not to eat the whole thing in one setting. I'm not trying to be up or knock the fuck out for three days. I'm not trying to do that, okay? But, you know, that's my little journey. Y'all can put y'all little journey down there in the comments and let's discuss. Let's trade experiences because I haven't had a bad trip yet. You know, i only been on this shit for a couple of days, so... Who knows, all right? But anyway, so let's just get into this video. Um, An update on the Breonna Taylor case. So after we went through the whole grand jury, um, coming out basically saying that they're only going to indict the Brett Hankinson guy for um, wanton endangerment and, you know, giving him three charges of that and then giving him $15,000 bond, um... 
a grand juror has come out and is trying to procure a lawyer to sue to, you know, get information released so that people can know what's going on because they felt like they was played. This grand juror do feel like they was played because while we're sitting here talking about how come they didn't charge them for the murder of Breonna Taylor, for the murder of Breonna Taylor, blah, blah, blah. What is this endangerment um, felony charge or whatever that they charging and all this stuff? That ain't got nothing to do with this. We don't care about that. Why, why, why? Baby, this juror said they didn't even put that indictment on the table for them to consider the murder, the shooting. It was talking about the, they only gave them the wanton endangerment charge. That's it to consider. And then Daniel Cameron, whatever the fuck the AG name is, he didn't came out saying that they never, they didn't put that out there. You know, then it also comes out allegedly that, you know, the bullet that hit the officer in the leg wasn't Kenneth Walker's bullet, Breonna Taylor's boyfriend's bullet. So basically one of the officers that hit one of them. Okay. And I'm just sitting here like, this is just a shit show. This is just a shit show. And I feel so sorry for Breonna Taylor and, um, the family and everybody that's suffering through this. And I know they got to be going through hell. The psychological trauma that got they got to be going through, like, it's 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 unfortunate. And I, I feel for them so much. I said, this is some sad shit. What they are doing is really bullshit. They are railroading this case. And for what? For what? Okay. Now, you know, um, the AG talking about some, they're not going to release everything yet. They need a, uh, 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 they were going to release stuff, but, um, you supposed to keep the stuff secret or whatever. But since it's so much pressure, now they're going to release stuff, but then they need a week to release it so that they can make sure everybody's name and secrecy and all this girls shut up and just release the stuff. Quit, quit putting shit off. Okay. What you're doing is just, you're prolonging, you're delaying, you're dragging this out. And you're just showing how much of an ass you are, okay? Where's your humanistic side? I know we got to follow the law or whatever, but if you would have followed the law to me, you should have just went on ahead and put out there that, um, put that charge out there. Somebody killed this girl, okay? One of those officers killed them, killed that girl, okay? And all three of them should have been charged for breaking into that home, all right? So, <sighs> It is what it is at this point. It makes me upset. You know, each and every week, it's like something else keeps coming out. Um, moving on from that. I'm about to read <laughs> If that's not anything, I spoke on this last week when it happened the day before or the day of. Because that's when I put my video out. All right. And Tory Lanez. All right. Tory Lanez, Daystar Pearson. That ignorant dude that ignorant little person you got to be politically correct he wanted to get on twitter and say to my fans i'm sorry um that i've been silent respectably you know um look for me at 9 p.m eastern time or whatever pacific whatever okay we thinking that he about to go live. Mind you, this is the day after we got the verdict about the Breonna Taylor case. A black woman who was unjustly killed by gunfire, by the cops, okay? That's the one. Then, 9 p.m. hits. No, nobody hear nothing. I don't see nothing happening on my Twitter or whatever. Because whatever was going to happen, I was just going to look at the shit on the shade room. And that's exactly what I did. And, you know, you can get in your feelings if I didn't listen to it or whatever. I, I, I already told you. You should already know that I wasn't going to support that. What wound up happening is, and if it looked like I'm looking somewhere else because it feel like I am, it's the way the camera is. You know what I'm saying? On the, if you got an iPhone, you you understand. But Because I feel like I'm looking directly here, but it look like the camera's over here. Girl, crazy. But anyway... Fuck that. Daystar Peterson decided to release a 17-track diss album going after everybody, just about everybody who said something negatively about him in this whole situation, this Megan Thee Stallion situation, shooting and everything, um, Megan Thee Stallion herself. Um, I did not listen to the album. I was not giving that man no streams. I was not giving him any type of play. 
I heard parts of the songs that, you know, everybody was really talking about and they got everybody's pennies up in the wide um, from the blogs that was on, you know, like Ball Alert and Shade Room. It's some blogs that refuse to play him and give him any more press. And so I stand by them. Um, but it was almost as if the Shade Room was getting paid because the Shade Room had put up at least 10, 15 goddamn posts back to back about Tory Lanez, Tory Lanez, Tory Lanez. I was like, damn, so is you on the payroll too, uh, Shade Room? Because this was crazy. Um, basically one of the songs, I don't know what the name of it, but one of the songs he, he, they said he was basically talking about the relationship that he had with Megan. We already knew y'all was somewhere fucking around. We knew it. Don't make it seem like you was in love with this girl or you cared about this girl or whatever. Because if you did, you would not be trying to tarnish her name the way that your name is tarnished. Because your name is tarnished. And I'm going to get to that in a second. He put out there basically saying, how the hell you get shot in the foot with no tenders or no bones? Um, you know, um, getting hit or whatever. The same way people get shot in the head and they still survive for that shit. <sighs> the same way people get shot any other way and the bullet miss any major organs. It just by ha chance happens, okay? So, therefore, you putting this out there trying to make it seem like you had absolutely nothing to do with this shooting. You did not shoot her. She did not get shot and all this shit or whatever. So, you're saying this. So, now... You got people in the public who is already either on the fence or already on his side like, see, I told you, I told you, it didn't happen. She a liar and all this stuff. She just trying to bring a black man down and blue, 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 blue. And you causing confusion and stuff. And it's messed up. We are on the heels of this woman who did not get justice for her death. And she was shot. And this other woman, black woman, who has come out and said that she was shot. Now you're trying to, you know, gaslight her, okay? You're talking and putting out this 17-track album to profit off the situation, off of her injuries and stuff, off of her back for what you did, okay? And people keep on saying, if he really did something, why they didn't arrest him? Because she didn't press charges. And they have been saying that they've been looking into stuff to see if they can press charges. You have to keep on reading. It's been stuff that's been coming out, all right? They're trying to see if they can press charges somehow, some way. He already has the gun charge. If he didn't shoot her, why did he have the gun charge for possession of it, Okay. This came at a head where everybody is doubting the situation, you know, and to this day, I still believe what I believe, and I believe that he did it. I will take Megan's word for it because if Megan really wanted to come out, and here's the thing that's, that, 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 that messed me up about the whole situation. Megan never came out and dogged him. When the whole thing happened, that's what's making me believe more so her side. Because she could have came out, she could have tarnished, you know, trashed the fuck out of him. Nigga, you the one that shot me, you did this, she could have pressed charges, she could have did this. She told y'all why she didn't press charges. She told y'all everything that was going on. She showed y'all y'all her feet. Then it came out that after this, you know, I was like, Megan, please don't say nothing. Don't, don't fall into the trap or anything. It comes out saying that her lawyers was doing the work because basically what was going on is they got proof that he was faking text messages. Okay. Um, trying to pay people to put out false information and pay people within her own camp. That IE goes to her best friend, Kelsey, who was also allegedly, this is all alleged, who was also in the car with her, you know, um, one of the recent things that I seen about this whole case is the fact that Kelsey's one of her friends, um, has called out Casey, Kelsey or whatever, because they're no longer cool. Um, and Kelsey has yet to say anything, but this friend of Megan called out Casey, uh, Kelsey and basically said on the night that all of this happened, you came to me and you told me that it was Tori that did it. Y'all got into a petty ass argument and he was drunk as shit. And he's the one that shot her in her foot. You told me this. Okay. And it said the only way that you will get somebody to say something or whatever is if they pay you. That's what you said. All right. You said all of this. You know what I'm saying? So now why are you silent? Why are you not coming to her defense? Okay. You know, and I felt that kind of odd too. If you was in the car, you could have backed up her statement too, Kelsey, and be like, you know, yeah, she telling the truth or whatever. Why are you being silent unless you had something to do with it too? Truth be told, people was trying to blame Kelsey. Tori came out and said, no, it wasn't her. Okay. So who was it, Daystar? Daystar, it was you. 
it had to be you. Was it the bodyguard that was in there? It was you, the bodyguard, Megan, and Kelsey up in the goddamn car. And then you made Megan put out the goddamn medical reports that showed that she had gunshot wound in the foot and the other foot got strapnel from that gunshot fragment and stuff like that all up in both her feet. So she was, in fact, shot. They have medical proof. So who did it? She didn't do it herself. She didn't bend down and shoot herself in the goddamn heel. Okay? Like, it's so dumb. And what makes me mad about that is that that man put this shit out to profit off of a situation. And it's not a good look. I don't care how, which way, or I don't, I don't give a fuck if you listen to it and be like, oh, this shit is banking. And that's the, that's to add insult to injury for people who was taken up for her to come out. And I, I, I seen some people who actually was like, I'm team Megan, or I believe Megan, who actually went on ahead and listened to the album and come out and talk about something. Well, damn, the album good as shit though. Like it's some bangers on there. Like, come on, that's messed up. <laughs> they gotta be a mad fuck right there. And I feel so sorry for Megan that she got to go through this all right and then what made is so much worse you got Rick Ross coming out uh for Tory uh basically saying that you fucked up for doing this okay I said Rick Ross why you promoting your shit you know I was I was like okay okay but what you said is correct but you could have did it without promoting your own stuff and tagging um your own people up in your shit but okay fine um uh, also you know he comes out because he was getting backlash for the reason why, you know, he released the album the day after the Breonna Taylor situation. He said 925 is either his mother's birthday or her death date. And I said, so you did this in commemoration of your mother. You released a diss, a diss album in commem uh, commemoration of your mother. Way to honor her. That don't make no sense. Now, all of a sudden, the proceeds is going to... Um, Breonna Taylor Foundation. Boy, if you don't get the fuck up out of here with that bullshit, I don't believe anything that Daystar says. I will never listen to the album, so don't ask me. I don't need to. And, um, you done absolutely nothing to convince me. You didn't even put a, a smidge of a thought that, hmm, maybe Megan could. This situation is crazy. But I do want to understand why Kelsey hasn't said anything. And what went down. Like, at this point, I really don't care no more. I really don't care no more. Like, I feel like we run this story into the ground. And unless somebody's getting arrested, I really don't care no more. Okay? It is what it is. Um, Moving on from that. Former basketball star Delonte West. We spoke about him before. Um, the first time I believe speaking on him and his issues that was going on was when somebody being malicious, you know, trying to use it as a joke or whatever, filmed him, you know, out on the street after he got into a fight and basically looking homeless. And you can tell that it's some mental issues going on with that. And so, you know, people from the NBA and people will keep on saying how come the people from the NBA, his former teammates, his coaches and people or whatever, they're not coming out to say anything to him and trying to help him out. And the fact of the matter is people have been trying to help him. Okay. But that person has to want the help. And it's hard to try to help somebody that don't think that they need help, especially when they're going through a mental episode. And that's what was going on with Delonte West. And fortunately, Mark Cuban, the owner of the Mavericks um, basketball team, he was able to somehow talk some sense into him and to get him into a rehab. So that's the first step. Admitting that he has an issue, second step is actually going about doing something about it, which was doing a rehab. So hopefully this is a positive outcome. Hopefully. Um, moving on from that, The Lion King is getting a sequel. <laughs> Because some of y'all didn't like it, okay? Whatever. It is what it is. Um, I never thought that it would... Do, I didn't think that it was sequel worthy, to be quite honest. To be quite honest, I'm just going to be honest. It was a cute little movie. You know what I'm saying? I do prefer the animated version better than that. Of course, you know, the nothing beats the classic. Nothing beats the original. But, you know, Barry Jenkins, who did the Moonlight movie, um, he's going to be the director. And, you know... Congratulations. That's a big old, that's a big thing. A Disney production. All right. You know, congratulations to that black man. Um, moving on from that. Nimi fucking leaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. 
shit was funny to me. I don't care what nobody say. The shit was funny to me because I wasn't expecting it, but I should have expected it. Listen, this is how you bring a bit. This is an example, one of many examples of how you burn bridges left and right, one on one, and what not to do. Okay, I'm going to listen. Nene had came out with this video basically trying to say, and we spoke on this a couple of weeks ago, trying to say, you know, she decided not to return back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise or whatever. And I'm sitting here like, no, you was fired. It's already reports put out there that you was they, that you would let go. Okay. Uh like it was it was stuff that happened in negotiation. They called her bluff and they just basically said, Your services are no longer needed, unfortunately. And so at this point, you know, Nene bowed out, you know, made it seem like she was bowing out gracefully, you know, thanked everyone. I think she even thanked Andy and all that stuff, whatever. Andy Cohen came out and said some stuff too and, you know, posted this little post or whatever. And, you know, oh, she used to call me Buttercup until this day. She still do. Hopefully she'll be back and woo, 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 woo. Okay. A couple of nights ago on Watch What Happens Live, after the Real Housewives, was it after the Real Housewives of Potomac? Wendy Williams was on there, okay? Wendy Williams was on there, and somehow they get into this conversation about Nene. Because remember, Wendy and Nene were good girlfriends all of a sudden all over again. They had they little, they was cool at one point. They had a falling out, and then they became cool again. And I put cool in air quotes, quote unquote, cool, okay? Um, You know, we're like, this ain't gonna last. As soon as I saw that they linked back up, and they were supposed to be, friends i said y'all ain't friends to each other y'all are using each other or more so i feel like nene was using wendy because wendy don't need the press wendy don't need the exposure or whatever she don't need her name here and there or whatever wendy already has that wendy is a master of that okay she got her own show that is named after her she's not on a show with a bunch of cast people you know she's not a member of a show that has a bunch of cast members you know what i'm saying so i was like hmm Let's just see how long this lasts because it was only a matter of time. And sure enough, when Wendy got up on there, because they already had their little tiff about, you know, Wendy blasting Nene about, you know, putting her on her um, IG live or whatever, trying to call her up. And then she called her, you know, um, called her out on her show, you know. So that happened. That was riff, part of the rip. Baby, this just tore the whole bitch open, okay? Wendy said, you know... Basically saying how Nene ain't nothing but drama. She'll possibly be back, okay? And um, trying to get her a new show or whatever. Don't nobody want to see a spinoff with Nene, okay? Don't nobody want to see um, Nene and her kids boring. Don't nobody want to see Nene um, being a grandmother boring. Don't nobody want to see Nene and Greg. That's boring. Don't nobody want to see Nene take over Hollywood. That is boring, okay? You know, so, of course, I'm sitting here like, whoa, <laughs> That friendship is done, quote unquote, over friendships. Um, I said that would have been done because, baby, you ain't finna be my friend and blast me out. Okay, we can tell the truth, but we can tell the truth in private. All right, you ain't got to put my business out there and tell me how you tell the public how you feel about me if we ain't cool. I mean, if we cool or whatever. So that's over and that's done with right then and there. I just knew that was some shit. Baby. Nene came out in a seven minute video that she put on her YouTube channel. Her YouTube channel. Looked like she was sitting in the parking, uh, in the lobby of a hotel or some some building or whatever. I said, Mama couldn't even wait till she got home to set up. Okay, she said, Bitch, Greg, Greg, hold the camera, hold the phone right quick so I can record this. Okay, she was sitting in there, and she basically said, You know, she called Andy Cohen, uh, uh, racist. I said, Oh no, this is not the first time that she's done that though. Okay, she. After she spewed out a whole bunch of tweets calling him racist, calling her a cokehead, um, doing all of this stuff, I said, um, did she really do this? And I went to her Twitter and them tweets were still up there. I said, oh, no. And then when she did this video, baby, the part, once again, she called Andy a racist, basically said that they need the ratings. Um, she made, that ratings was low in the tweets, that's what she said. And then said this. Wendy Williams... What you need to do is focus on trying to drain your enormous legs and feet and find yourself the nearest water pill. Bitch. 
Baby, I was high. But baby, that shit took me out because I was not expecting that. I said, you will not make fun of the fact that she... You clocked her on the fact that she has a, a, a disability, okay? She has a medical issue that caused her legs to swell up, all right? We just seen them legs swell up, all right? And you told that bitch to drain her legs and her feet. Go find the nearest water pill. I said, God damn, bridges are done. Listen. Here's my thing. I know we get fed up. And she was like, bravo, them. They was trying to push her out for four years. They pushed her out. Basically confirming that they fired her. Okay? And if there was any hope, of, I don't feel like, I think that she burnt all the bridges right now with bravo. If there was any hope of her ever trying to come back that she ever had, dashed them. She destroyed them right then and there. Okay? Um, who wants to work with that? That's probably why they pushed her out. That's probably why they didn't want to work with her anymore anyway. And I'm just sitting here like, you do not have to do this, okay? Nina, you don't have to do this. This is not the right way to go about it. Because even though I understand you want to put out there and call people out, but this can also potentially, because you're not that, you're a big star, you know, star or whatever in the reality world in that particular segment. What else do you have to offer? Can you hold a show? Okay. Can you be more than a B cast member? Can you be a main person? You know what I'm saying? Um, can you be the face of something that everybody likes or whatever? No, you can't at this point. And I mean, Wendy wasn't necessarily wrong about nobody really wanting to watch a show with those different things about Nene. But truth be told, that's what a lot of the shows are these days about people, family, about people coming up. Everybody and their mama, especially if they white, they get in these shows and it's just showing them and their family and them and their business and taking on trying to get to Hollywood and all this stuff. Why Nene can't do it? I would have watched. It probably would have been boring, but I still would watch, you know. I would have wanted to see the train wreck or whatever. Um, it is what it is because I watched all of the ladies, uh, you know, spinoffs or whatever. But, like, you got other people that's watching, other networks, other executives that's watching you do this stuff. And you're doing this in a public and that could possibly sway them to not want to have any dealings with you in the future. You have to think about your future, okay? I understand you're pissed off right now, but some things should just be held privately. Y'all put down in the comments how y'all felt about Nene coming out. Do you think she burnt the bridges? Do you think it's over for her? Do you think she can bounce back? How do you feel about it? Oh, let me get some water. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, my sinuses, y'all. My sinuses. The weather is changing and it's just got me all confluxed. But anyway, speaking of doing stuff in the public, Lisa Ray and the brat. Now, I was going back and forth on Twitter with people trying to tell y'all the reason. Because I, I literally, when I saw the clip of what was going on, I was not here for Lisa's reaction. Never said that she didn't have a right to feel the way that she felt. I just wasn't here for the way that she put it out there so publicly. That's what I had an issue with. For those that don't know what's going on, Lisa Ray is a part of this. Um, I think this ladies with cocktails or something that be on Fox Soul with Claudia Jordan, um, Selena Johnson, uh, Vivica Fox, and herself. Okay. And so it was her birthday the other day. I think it was the other day or Monday or whatever. And they had a surprise for her. The ladies had a surprise for her. And the surprise was bringing on her sister, the brat. Um, if y'all didn't know, Lisa Ray and DeBrat are related. They're all sisters. Um, Shot town. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. If you want to know, y'all think I'm Chicago. Okay. You see my attitude sometime or whatever. Baby, Lisa Ray and DeBrat gave y'all two different Chicagos. Okay. DeBrat gave you that Chicago like, listen, I'm just let you go ahead and do what you got to do because I know you ain't talking to me like that, but I'm not going to continue into your foolishness. Lisa Ray gave you, bitch, you ain't going to tell me what the fuck to do. You ain't going to tell me to be quiet. I'm going to say what the hell it is that I got to say, and I'm not going to fake anything. I'm not going to fake any emotion or nothing. I said, ooh, that Chicago attitude came out. I said, come on, listen. But anyway, the brat came up there to say happy birthday and all this stuff. Now, you have got to go on the Fox So Don't go by just the clips that you've seen on the Shade Room or Ball Alert. Go on the Fox So. Fox Soul, um, F-O-X-S-O-U-L. 
girl almost messed it up, YouTube page and look at the, the actual interview. It was 17 minutes short. And it understands, you understand why Lisa came out the way that she came out at the brag. Now, on the one hand, you know, the brat said, happy birthday. You know, she had wrote a post or whatever. And Lisa did respond to the post, but kind of find out we had no idea that they have not spoken in months since prior before COVID. Okay, so it was probably like December or whatever um, since they had spoken. And my whole thing is, you know, um, Lisa went off. Lisa went off and saying, you know, basically it's messed up that you coming up on here and you trying to say happy birthday after we haven't spoken in months and it wasn't her that cut off communication. It was the Brett that cut off communication. She didn't even know that she was coming on here and I get it. I get 100%. I get both sides and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to break it down for you and I'm going to tell you why I lie. I feel like both of them was wrong to a certain degree. What I feel like Lisa Ray was wrong for was the way that she went off on a public platform. This is family issues. Keep that shit private. It was a private family issue that we made public. And unfortunately, when you make certain things public, it's no longer your business. It's everybody's business, which leads to public opinion. And I'm pretty sure that's not what she really thought was going to happen. I wish she would have just said, thank you, and we'll talk after this. We'll talk after this and let it go. And they cut her off, okay? That's all she could have said. She could have even looked like, you know, it was something wrong or whatever, but I didn't want her to go off the way that she went off. But Lisa being the bitch that she is, and I'm talking about a real-ass bitch that she is, she can't fake that emotion. So I understand why she blew up. And no, I'm not taking up for the brat. She had every right to be pissed off. If I have not heard from you in months, how dare you pop up on my platform and try to whisk me or, you know, use something in public to publicly say hello to me after not saying nothing to me in months. And I don't know what's going on. Okay. And also what was upsetting with Lisa is that, you know, she's, she felt some way about the Brad relationship that's what it came out and that's what most of the anger is coming from because she didn't know about the relationship you know and i i i felt at one point maybe you know because she said she was getting questions about the relationship that the brat had with her current girlfriend or whatever fiance girlfriend um and, you know, she had no idea about it. She found out through social media, whatever. And she figured that, you know, you my family or whatever. How come I have to find out through social media and all this stuff? I'm realizing, you know, this is what I thought. Okay, and it boils down to this. On the front, I'm going to tell you where the bread went wrong. The bread. I'm put a pause in it. The, where the bread went wrong and what I don't agree with. If I had an issue with somebody, I'm not going to come on their public platform and surprise them or try to work it out on their platform and um, as a way to, it was almost like it was a safety. Like, oh, she ain't going to cuss me out or whatever, but you know how your sister is, okay? You should have came to her in private and fixed that issue prior to that. Okay, before they got up on there, you know how your sister is. Because truth be told, I would have felt the same way that Lisa felt. Oh, bitch, you want to wish me happy birthday, but I ain't heard from you in how many months? And you want to wish me happy birthday? You want to come on my shit and wish me happy birthday like it's all good? It ain't all good. Don't do that, okay? But I wouldn't have went off on my platform because I have an image to uphold myself, all right? It wouldn't have been no fake shit. I would have been like, mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you for that. And that's it. That's all I would have said. Okay. But then when we got off that camera, oh, I would have laid up into that ass. So you want to come on here and you want to do this and whatever, woo, 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 because I still would have been th thinking about my image and her image as well. You know what I'm saying? That's how I would have handled it. But you know, we are different and it is what it is. The brat should have reached out prior to this and said, girl, you know, ha let's sit down and have a conversation before she came on her platform. Lisa had every right to be pissed off that you used this and this is the first time that I sent you. What I don't agree with is I understand being upset that you didn't know something that was going on in your, her life or whatever. Um, at one point, I my thing is the way Lisa said it, if you look at the whole interview, it was almost as if the brat was obligated to tell her everything that was going on in her life. Just because we are sisters, just because we are family does not mean that I'm obligated to tell you everything that goes on in my life. 
every major issue, every major event or whatever. I'm not obligated to tell you. The brat was not obligated to tell Lisa. And Lisa thought they was closer than they were. The brat actually said that she comes off harsh. She's very highly opinionated. She knows how she is when she comes off with stuff. So, therefore, she'd be scared to say anything to her. She was scared to say anything to her. Lisa, you have to look into yourself and to think and understand why. Well, damn, I thought we was close to this. But why is she saying that she was scared to say something to me? Why she felt the need to hide this from me like she couldn't come to me? You have to look into yourself and understand and see, think of the reason why that your sister felt this way. Like she couldn't come to you. That's on you that she felt that way. Maybe y'all got y'all wires crossed or whatever. Maybe it's some past history that we don't know about. But you should feel some type of way that your sister felt like she couldn't come to you and tell her something about something that was very important and a big thing in her life. You know, you said y'all discussed her sexuality before because before that I was thinking like, damn, because, you know, Lisa had an issue with bisexuality, bisexual men. Maybe she has with the, with the women or whatever. How did she feel about her sister? But then she addressed that and said, we spoke about that and said, you know, you should live your truth and stuff like that. So it was more so of her finding out about the relationship through social media and they haven't spoken and like I said, the brat wasn't obligated to tell her, but, you know, she still could have gave her a little heads up if they was family. But if she felt like they weren't close like that, I understand why she didn't say nothing. But I get exactly why Lisa was pissed off. Like, I get it. Like, bitch, I ain't seen you and you come on my shit like everything is all to the good. Both of them was wrong in a sense, but I get exactly where they came from. And the brat would have been me when Lisa was going off. If you're going to go off and you trying to, you know, you doing this shit in the public or whatever, I'm not going to feed into it. The brat looked like, the brat turned into a little sister. The brat looked, no, y'all shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yo no, yo no shit that went down. You do, you do, bitch. When Lisa said that, I said sound bite, bitch, sound bite. Okay, I said I know that's right, cause they was trying, they was trying to calm it down or whatever and get them back together. And they was like, bitch, you don't know what's going on. She know what's going on. Okay, okay, this ain't got nothing to do with y'all. It's family business that got made public. That's all that it is. And I just wish that it hadn't, because now it's pitting the sisters against each other, calling one sister a bitch, calling the other a bitch, whatever. The brat literally looked like the little sister, like she was really about to cry and all that stuff. Lisa probably cried afterwards. She was hurt. You know, they both full of hurt. And I just wish they could have talked about it before. Ill timing. Probably had the best intention of Brad, but you know your sister. You know your sister. Okay. And I feel like you should have handled that off screen first. You know what I'm saying? But y'all give me y'all opinion about it. And um, moving on from that. Naya Rivera's sister, Nikayla, and her ex-husband, Ryan Dorsey, the, the father of her child. There were some pictures that came out, you know, they was going to Target or whatever, but they was holding hands and stuff. They was a little bit too close for comfort. And then it came out, um, reports basically saying that allegedly they're living together. Um, she po posted something somewhat confirming it, somewhat not necessarily denying it, not necessarily confirming it. But then Ryan puts out a post basically saying that the son wanted, um, auntie to live with them, you know? Since they, he don't have his mom. I'm not comfortable with this. I It ain't my business, but it is not a move that I would make. I feel some type of way, you know, because, like, if there is a romantic aspect about this, Naya ain't been gone for two months. Has it been two months or whatever? It's like, it ain't even been six months yet, okay? And you moved on to her sister. Like, I know it's grief or whatever, but... That makes me look at both of y'all funny. Like, was something going on before she passed away? You know, um, you don't want the public to think or people to be up in your business. But why do you go outside knowing that, you know, because of this situation, you're more so in the public eye. People going to be looking for stuff and then you're holding hands to make it seem like if we're not together, why are we holding hands? Why are we holding hands? Okay. Why are we hugged up a little bit? Girl, no, it wouldn't be me. I can never go with my sister's ex. Okay, first of all, I don't do dick. But um, I can never be with my friend's ex. Okay, like, I just know. If 
just because you want to give the little boy security and everything, I understand that and, you know, some semblance of a home, two-parent home or whatever, you still could have looked in on him. That don't mean that you have to live with him. He'll still be protected. He'll still know that he loved or whatever. You come by every other day. You check in on him for a couple of hours and you talk to him. You FaceTime him. That don't mean that you have to live in the house with him. They fucking. If this is real, they fucking, bitch. You can't tell me no different. And I don't like that. I don't like that. But um, moving on from that, congratulations to Young Jeezy. He is getting his own um show also on Fox Show, a talk show on Fox Soul. Um, channel called Worth the Conversation with Jay. Um, prayers up for Brandy Maxell. Um, you know, former basketball wild star. You know, uh, it came out that she had a severe case of COVID. You know, and given the fact that she is a cancer survivor, you know, her immune system is compromised and things of that such. And so, um, the latest that I've heard is that she is on the men's and she could be possibly coming home soon. So prayers up for her and I hope that she do get better. Um, Sienna Miller came out and said, you know, once again, we have another example of how much of a beautiful human being Chadwick Boseman was. He gave, took a pay cut to give to his co-worker Sienna Miller on the movie 21 Bridges. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a really good movie. I suggest you watch it so that she can have an equal pay paycheck. Like she, cause you know, women still face women and minorities still face pay discrimination in a lot of work fields. And you know, the industry is no bit different. This industry is no different. And so he decided to take a, a pay cut so that she can get fair pay. You know, that's, that was a good man. All the stuff that we found out about him after he passed, that was a good man. Damn it. Damn it. Ooh. And then we still got Trump ass here. Listen, I did not watch the debates, okay? And you see how long it took me to get to it. I did not watch that circus, okay? I knew it was going to be a circus. I knew it was going to be a clown show, a rodeo, and all of that bullshit, okay? I was not about to put myself through that torture and watch that shit because I knew if one acted, I knew for sure that if anything, one was going to act like a spoiled ass brat and that was Trump. And from what I've been seeing, the clips, the tweets, the blogs and everything, I was 100% correct. Everybody that has watched it has said this was the worst freaking uh, presidential debate that we seen, okay, the way that he says the shit, he basically called Joe Biden's son a fucking cokehead, okay, that boy is dead, you don't talk about, I said, what, how you bringing the kids in, this ain't got shit to do with the kids, Joe ain't bring up your kids, why are you going so fucking low, and Joe didn't do, bitch, Joe, you should have jumped over that podium and popped that bitch, okay? They would have had to take me out. They would have had to take me out in handcuffs, all right? That's what would have happened in a straitjacket because I would have fucked his ass up. You do not do no shit like that, all right? And then you can't denounce white supremacy. You cannot denounce white supremacy, but what you do say is, proud boys, stand back, and but stand by. That is a white supremacist group. You told them to stand by. For just in case something happened. If you did not, and then everybody else that's on his team and the son coming out, the senator coming out trying to say that, oh, he just misspoke and all this stuff. No, he didn't misspeak. He didn't misspeak about anything. He said exactly what he meant, okay? Trump don't misspeak about nothing. He says exactly what he meant, no matter how stupid it is, okay? Quit, quit, hold him to the fucking fire. Hold him accountable and quit making fucking excuses for his dumb ass, okay? Joe told that, would you shut up? Talking to this clown, I said. <laughs> Woo, I feel sorry for everybody that watched that shit. Couldn't be me. And then come to find out this motherfucker. And you know what? I really wasn't going to watch it. Because when the New York Times, you know, leaked or whoever the fuck leaked his tax returns or whatever. Showing that he hadn't paid taxes in all those years. And then in 2016, 2017, he paid $750 goddamn dollars in taxes. In taxes. Bitch, I paid more than that. And I ain't no goddamn billionaire. I ain't nowhere close. What? What? 
Girl, that shit pissed me the fuck off. Okay? All these losses that he trying to say, I'm a very little dad. Bitch, shut up. Shut up. Just... Ooh, tax evasion. Okay, you come for the little people, but then the big head honcho right there, and you won't take him. Girl, get his ass out. And I voted already, so I don't give a damn about these goddamn fucking presidential debates or whatever. I voted for Biden. I put my thing in a special voting box all fucking ready. Okay, so listen, if you ain't registered, you need to go ahead and do that shit. Okay, because we got to get this motherfucker out. Out. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, Jeffree Star, little boyfriend, that little relationship, it's over and done with. Andre then put that motherfucker came and got the bag and left with some bags, okay? Like, he, uh, uh, Jeffrey put out there basically that, um, he's a low-life scum and that he stole from him and he won his shit back. Let me find down Andre and the baby mama back together pawning of his shit. Girl, girl, we knew that shit wasn't going to last. We knew that shit wasn't going to last. That motherfucker got over on that racist. God damn. <laughs> I don't feel bad for him, not one bit. It's very reminiscent of when Black China got with Rob Kardashian to get back at the Kardashians. <laughs> That's what it feels like for some reason. I don't know. I shouldn't be laughing, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't care. Um, and I want to end this video on a positive note. Congratulations are in order to Kevin Hart and his wife. They have welcomed the baby girl, Kiori. Kiori, my, or Kiori, my, I think it's my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and Usher, he welcomed his third child, his first with his girlfriend, who they also welcome the little girl sovereign um sovereign Bo raymond so you know congratulations everybody having babies hmm interesting covid babies baby y'all popping up y'all popping up y'all was getting it in but anyway that's all that i have for today you know i just wanted to give y'all this little video since i haven't gave y'all anything all week and um i will see you guys back on Friday. All right. You guys enjoy your weekend. Oh, well, the rest of your week, I should say, and your weekend if you don't watch me until um, power and all that shit. You know, you guys enjoy, and I will see you guys later. Peace.